Battlefront 2 is one of the biggest PC game releases of the past few months, a bombastic game with large battles over land, air and space. Now given its intensity you might be wondering about the possibility of playing this game if all you have available is a laptop with a low-end dedicated GPU. The good news is that there is a very high chance that you can play this game in some form. Hi, this is Alex from the Lowspe Gamer on Laptop Mag. Let's go through some of the things that you can do to get this game going on a low-end laptop GPU. First, I'm pretty sure you know this, but to start, you should drop your in-game settings. Thankfully, the game's menu is very straightforward on this regard, but you should make sure the settings are at their lowest on the configuration file. The configuration file is located on your document folder, Star Wars Waterfront 2, Settings. The file in question is called Profile Options Profile and can be opened with Notepad or Notepad++, variables that start with GST Render Control Graphical Quality and in a couple of my test setups some values were still not at their lowest after dropping all the game settings to low or off. There is a picture of the final configuration file in the article below so you can compare and make sure. Take note of this resolution scale variable, this will be important in a minute. Also, make sure DirectX 12 is disabled. This render API is supposed to provide better performance and lower overhead, but it does not do very well in this game on low-end GPUs, I was seeing a lot of unnecessary stuttering while it was enabled. And now, we're going to talk about one interesting thing, the Dev Console. You enter this tool from almost any part of the game by pressing what is often the tilde button in the upper left corner of your keyboard. The console allows you to test and change game variables while the game is running. Most are already on their lowest value, but there are still some that are worth talking about. Like renderdevice.dx11.1 enable and renderdevice.dx11.1 runtime enable, they disable some DirectX 11 features. Or thread.processorCount, which you can set to the number of cores in your CPU. If you want to experiment with something more visual, try worldrender.light title CS path enable zero that disables some of the indoor lights on the game. While this can have a very strong visual impact, the difference in performance is very noticeable. This also disables the holograms, but that does not really affect gameplay that much. The bad news is that changes done in the console are usually reset if you restart the game. There used to be a way to make them permanent in a user file, but this feature seems to have been removed for Battlefront 2 at the moment, so I would recommend you experiment to see which of these commands help you and apply them when you start the game. To navigate the console quickly, you can use the tab button to autocomplete to the closest command. The console will also show you a list of the possible commands that you can reach with what you have currently written, so you can add a couple of letters and use tab again to autocomplete until you have a full command. Once you get the hang of this, you can get to almost any command very quickly. And you can use the up and down keys to navigate commands that you have previously used on this session, so experimenting with a couple of variables is quite easy. Which takes me to the internal resolution scaler. Like many modern games, Battlefront 2 allows you to drop internal resolution on the game itself without affecting UI and the readable text. The setting in the game drops down to 25% of external resolution, but this is mapped in the resolution scale variable in the configuration file, which in practice allows you to set any value as a multiplier of 1, even if it's under 25%, so you could potentially drop it to this pixelated mess. You can experiment with this more easily on the console using the render.resolution scale variable, which allows you to change the value in real time so you can experiment until you get a compromise between performance and visibility. The value on the console will reset when you reload any map, but saving it on the configuration file is a bit more permanent. Right, how does this actually do in terms of performance? My first test was with a Xiaomi Notebook Air. This laptop comes with a very common 7th generation Intel Core i5-7200U CPU, 8GB of RAM and an NVIDIA MX150 GPU. The MX150 is the mobile equivalent of the GT1030, an entry-level dedicated GPU that started showing up in computers this year. Now, with all the settings in place and a resolution scale of 50%, the game did fantastically well, maintaining a good 60 FPS in most instances. 
The CPU will bottleneck the game in certain intense moments, such as explosions near the player, but during the rest of the match, performance was maintained. In the comparatively lighter Starfighter Assault, there was no performance drops, and the game managed to maintain 60 FPS during the entirety of the match. Overall, a much better result than you would expect out of something under the minimum requirements. Which made me curious about how this game will perform on this. This is an Alienware 11X, Dell's attempt at an ultra-portable gaming laptop. These models were produced between 2010 and 2012, and this unit in particular comes with a very old i7-2637M and a GT540M, both from 2011. So this is far from what you would expect to use on a heavy game from 2017. And yet, with a 30% resolution scaler, plus all the additionally mentioned tweaks, the game performed consistently over 30 FPS during Starfighter Assault, maintaining playable performance during the entire match. The laptop had a bit more trouble during Galactic Assault. The game will freeze at the start of a match or will run in very quickly, mainly due to the CPU struggling to keep up. But the once the map was loaded, the game managed to maintain over 30 FPS most of the time, with only the occasional loading freeze. Disabling the indoor lights was particularly useful during maps that include defending indoor capture points. Not bad considering how under the minimum requirements this device is. In conclusion, as long as you have a dedicated laptop GPU from the last 5 or so years, you can play Battlefront 2 as long as you are up to some experimentation.